Welcome, everyone. This is Josh White. I lead the producer education team here at NCBA. If you've joined our webinars in the past, you're used to hearing one of our volunteer leaders introduce this, but uh, they're scattered all over the country attending summer uh, state conferences, state association conferences, cattle shows, and other things representing our industry uh, all across the country tonight. So I'm going to host you. Uh, pleased to welcome you to our webinar focused on feeder calf marketing tools tonight. Uh, we're proud to be working with several um, cutting edge programs and, and resources tonight uh, and, the, and the guys that represent those. And um, we really appreciate all the effort that they've put in. Um, for those of you that are new to our webinar series, uh, this may be familiar, familiar but if, you're, if you are new, um, your lines are all muted as attendees because we have uh, quite a few of you on, but you can chat in questions anytime in the uh, question box there on your, should be on your toolbar that you can ask questions and then we'll moderate those out at the end of the webinar. Uh, if you have any trouble with the technology, uh, if you're just joining for the audio uh, or on the app and you can't see the slides very well, these are recorded and you can go to ncba.org and click on the producer tab and then select webinars and find all the recordings. Uh, we also send a link out to everyone that signed up for the webinar uh, here in a day or two once the uh, recordings are posted. So with that, I'll introduce our speakers. Um, tonight we have Jared Wareham, who's general manager of Top Dollar Angus. Uh, also with us, Chris Engel, who's director of Angus Link at the American Angus Association. Uh, but to kick us off tonight, Chip Kemp will, will lead off. He's the Director of Commercial and Industry Operations at International Genetic Solutions. And Chip, I'm going to hand it off to you to uh, get this thing started. Josh, thank you very much. And certainly thank you to my friends at NCBA and, and to Chris and Jared. I think this is going to be a, a powerful little bit. And we I, I know I speak for all of us when we're very appreciative of this platform. So certainly when it comes to the concept of feeder calf marketing, we all know that, that at times that can bring on a level of angst and anxiety that can, can get a little uncomfortable. And frankly, uh, sometimes that, that frustration can uh, get to us just a little bit. And I think our goal here this evening for all of us is, is to help us transform that frustration into something tangible, some leverage and some knowledge as we move forward. A lot of us are marketed at and marketed to, but clearly we're in a time where uh, nearly all serious parties in the beef business are looking for truth, they're looking for data that they can build and, and leverage and bet their own business on going forward. And so that's what we're going to try to talk to you about just a little bit tonight. And so we know I could put up hundreds of different images here to, to highlight the fact that it's a data-driven beast. Um, and I know that from time to time, we might all lament that a little bit. Uh, we, we kind of think back to days of ye yesteryear and, and think about simpler times. And, and while there may be some, some, some pieces and some credibility to some of those things, the reality is the industry is what it is. And the data demand is, is not going to let up at any level. In fact, I think if anything, it's going to get exponentially greater. And I think the gentleman that will follow me will echo that. And so these are just a few of some of those recent um, attempts to get that data. So I'm going to spend a little bit talking to you about a tool called the IGS Feeder Profit Calculator. But to do that, I need to at least take a moment to explain what is IGS? What is International Genetic Solutions? Because I would suspect that most of you, um, or at least some of you on here, are not familiar or not overly familiar with that entity. So what is International Genetic Solutions? IGS is quite simple. It is an effort to do something that, similar to what many of you have to do every day, and that's to reach across the fence and shake the hand of a neighbor and work together. And so we have a huge swath of breed associations, 15-ish at present, that are working together to try to empower our commercial clients, our commercial customers, to make powerful and serious decisions. How do we do that? We have the largest beef genetic evaluation on the planet. It's the only mega multi-breed eval in existence. This isn't about marketing hype. It's to set the stage for what the profit calculator is 
And one of the key pieces of IGS is it allows for direct comparison of cattle regardless of breed type. That's crucial to this conversation going forward. No breed bias, the chips fall where they land and where they're supposed to land. And so um, that, that's key, it has to be credible. But most importantly for this conversation this evening, IGS allows us to do something that's a little bit unique and it allows gen genetic awareness of the biggest population of cattle in the beef business. And that's the crossbred feeder calf. And the overwhelming majority of us listening are deeply vested through that prism of that crossbred feeder calf. And so we wanna think about um, how can we look at pure, certainly straight bred calves as well, um, but, but specifically that crossbred population is so big and oftentimes uh, underrepresented in these sort of tools. So the profit calculator specifically, much like the other tools you'll we'll talk about a little bit later and appropriately so, one of the keys to what we'll all talk about tonight is we need to have some indication and some understanding of the genetic awareness and, and, and the genetic prowess of your bull battery. And so we have to, we highlight known genetics, known sires, and the terminology known means that you need to be able to provide EPDs to, uh, to the system so that we can function. And so we need to know the, the breed association that they're tied to and the reg numbers of those sires if we're gonna do that. We'll also talk a little bit about the fact that we need to know some of your basic management practices. There's a whole variety that we look at, but two major drivers in that are how do you handle that weaning time and what's your vaccination protocol look like? The profit calculator, again, is breed agnostic, and that's crucial for it to do um, it, its job, to go out there and be effective for a wide swath of folks across a, a wide swath of breed types and breed combinations. Now, in most cases, or at least in a number of cases in a commercial setting, we may have a limited knowledge on our cow herd. But in other cases, we have very advanced, very significant awareness of the genetics of our cow herd. So we kind of cover all spectrums on the cow side of the equation, even if we're sourcing known bulls. And so we can look at things as simple as basic breed types of the cow herd, or for those of you who might be able to say, well, these are the bulls in my bull battery in 2017, and these are the bulls in my bull battery in 2016 and 15, and so on and so forth, we can utilize, in that case, those maternal grandsires to even refine the prediction. That's not the most frequent way, but it is surprising how many folks are able to do that. Again, the profit calculator itself has no bias in it. That is a crucial step. A huge piece to the profit calculator is it reflects the power of responsible crossbreeding and heterosis or hybrid vigor. And so, as you all quite possibly know, that when we calculate EPDs, regardless of who does that, we pull heterosis out because clearly heterosis can't be transferred to the next generation. But in this case, if we're looking at your feeder calf, the heterosis associated with that calf is already baked into the cake. So we can include that and we can get a pretty good understanding of the bump in terms of profit potential associated with that heterosis. Behind the profit calculator, what backs it? Again, millions of records, loads of serious science, and we use independent voices to help us get a lot of these things. So we have our own science team, but we have outside folks and we have a variety of economics that come from both uh, internal and outside sources. Again, one of the crucial and, and one of the important pieces of the profit calculator. It speaks a language we all understand, one that's intuitive to all of us, dollars and cents. And so we find it important that we be able to communicate in a parlance between a serious commercial producer and a cattle feeder and, and or those marketers in the middle. We need a common language with which we can work. Dollars seems to do that fairly effective. and so. Ultimately, while uh, we're talking about marketing and appropriately so this evening, a lot of times we think about the profit calculator, why it has a strong marketing bent. It's in, in some ways a bit more of an empowerment tool because all parties involved are getting knowledge, not just getting marketed at. And so that, that knowledge starts with a handful of key pieces. One, we take a look at the relative, the relative management value of your calf crop versus an average that we have defined. Now you might 
view your average in your region a little different, a little higher, a little lower. But I can tell you how we have it set is that we view that we are setting it that 60% of the calves in the industry are weaned for a, thir- a minimum of 30 days or more. And 60% of the calves are doubly vaccinated for BRD. Those are two huge events and overwhelmingly overwhelming piles of data are, are clear about the import they have on the success of those calves once they get in the feed yard. And so we're going to look at your calf and how does it relate to, to that 60% weaning of vaccination. We're also going to look at the relative genetic value of your calf based on those sires and the cowherd information that you give us. We're going to then look how that particular combination of genetics is going to reflect and we use what is a common uh, piece of awareness in the industry, the average Angus genetic profile over the last number of years. And so we're going to compare your cap crop to that, again, a very known commodity. And then we add those two things together to get what is really kind of the key piece of the report that someone receives, and that's the total relative value, combines those two things together. So the key to the profit calculator is we see it. It's quick, simple, and powerful. And you've got hay to put up, fix the fence to build. Uh, hopefully, you get to see your kids' uh, ball games and the like. You've got a lot of things to do. So our key to this and our goal is to make it credible, but also something that's fairly simple and intuitive to work with. And so there is a fair amount of information that's needed, but I would guess that you all would expect nothing less. Much of this is information that you already provide if you are working with a pretty serious entity uh, from a sale facility or maybe online or a serious marketer. So if you look, if, if you read these things, most of this you're like, well, clearly we already uh, have the ability to trade this information. But there may be some pieces that are a little bit new to you. You can see, to use the profit calculator, we got to know something about your health program. And we're going to look at dates, specific products. Um, if you have any other um, third-party verification programs. We'll highlight those for you. We're going to look at some weights and some dates and all those things. But really, the key piece here, as I said before, those sire registration numbers. We need to know something about your sire and something about the cap herd. Now, interestingly enough, we're able to do this at no cost. And one is clearly, when they hear this, simply is going to say, okay, easy. Um, this startles me a little bit because anybody, somebody, anytime somebody tells me something like this, I immediately uh, get my radar up and I get a little suspicious. So if it doesn't cost, how do you do that? And why should I not run the other way? Because it seems a little suspicious. Well, here's the reality. It doesn't cost you, but the serious seed stock folks involved with the IGS platform are the ones who foot this bill. They've decided collectively, the group has made the the, the decisions to provide these sort of credible and tangible tools and put that bill. So to be clear, there is a cost. It's actually a very significant and real cost. Those using the tool just don't pay it. And so that's something I want you to know. It is free to use to the commercial cattleman uh, or to the seed stock producer alike to use the tool. Um, and, And that's important, but I want you to know how that comes about. If you choose to use this, you can either go on the web at internationalgeneticsolutions.com. You can also go through our friends at IMI Global at feederprofit.com, or you can just grab your phone. It shows you right there. If you're an iPhone user, go to the Apple Store and search for FPC app, or, or go to Android and search for Feeder Profit. You can do it a variety of different ways. Ultimately, what happens is as a producer, you spend roughly 20 to 30 minutes putting in the knowledge that we need. And within two business days, you're going to get back a digital certificate that looks something like this. And actually, there is a second page. I'm not showing it tonight, and it just lists all the genetics. We we are as transparent as possible so everybody can see the whole piece. And what you'll see on the certificate pretty clearly on the left, the blocked out producer and feeder calf information there, there's addresses and that sort of thing. So you didn't know who this certificate belonged to. But if you look a little closer on the left, you'll see what this tells us is we know the delivery date of these calves, what they're expected to weigh then, the weaning dates, the birth dates. We know these are 670 weight black polled steers. Also, we understand that 
there's some breed composition information. This, ca this set of calves has really about five different breeds highlighted, but those are overwhelmingly two breeds involved. In this case, it's about 60% Simmental and about 40% Angus, so some Sim Angus steers. Below that, some treatment history. And, and that breed composition and that health are important. Some feeders specialize in different kinds of cattle, and that tool is important for them, that piece is important for them. But the real magic of the certificates on the right, Towards the bottom, you see some star metrics that kind of show how this set of feeder steers relates and rates relative to the IGS platform and mass. But the real key is that bolded number at the top, the total relative value. And let me tell you what that means. In this case, what that says is, regardless of the day or what sale facility you're in, whatever a buyer would consider to pay for that average set of calves, as we defined it a few minutes ago, in that sale platform, whether that's in the field, in a barn, online, whatever they would pay, they could pay another 858 and break even on those calves. Now, to be clear, that buyer ain't gonna pay another $9 just for the privilege of breaking even. But our goal here, as we started to talk at the beginning, is to have a common language so that as a seller, you can show clearly with a third-party audit with somebody who has no financial relationship, so there's no interest in skewing the data, that you've added a significant amount of value. And since the base of this is zero, in this case, you've added nearly $9 worth of value. So they're not going to go $9, but they might go three or four, because if they're looking at multiple pins of black 670 weight, mid six weight calves available to them that day, what we find frequently is those with knowledge are a safer bet, and they'll go a little more for those calves. That's how the common language of dollars and cents seems to work for us. And so, for that serious commercial producer, the profit calculator comes with little time, no expense. You get that third-party validation. You get it in a digital format, and that's important because then you can share it with your marketers, your potential buyers. And that certificate, you also need to know, we never share it with anyone without your permission, ever. The only people who see it initially are the folks, the, the single individual who will run it, potentially one other internal employee, and yourself. And you get to choose if that gets used anywhere else. That certificate for a lot of folks, they use it as a baseline of, uh, of what they're doing. Are there opportunities going forward? We frequently, it's, nearly constant. Folks will say, okay, hypothetically, if I were to view this set of calves and do this differently, maybe they hadn't intended to use a post-weaning preconditioned period. Maybe there wasn't going to be any time. They were going to uh, wean and ship, but they would like to consider what value that might add. They might reach out and we say, sure, we can, we can take a look at that. And so that kind of thing happens all the time, or as they compare from year to year, it gives a nice decision support benchmarking sort of tool. Again, of course, like all of the tools we'll talk about tonight, it helps you stand out in the crowd and fortunately um, works well with top dollar Angus Lane sort of programs. If you're somebody looking to consider cattle for top dollar and you'd like to kind of get a, a precursor look, are they, are they high end cattle? Would they make sense for what Jared's going to talk about a little bit later? At no cost, you can run them through the calculator. Same situation. If, if you, if you, we're fortunate enough to use Chris's program that we'll talk about in a few minutes, and maybe it's treated you well, and you just want another tool to, again, just continue to highlight those calves, no question, you can certainly continue to do that. So it works well with those programs. Here's just a couple quick producers real fast. Uh, gentleman in the middle of Kansas, uh, Kansas, Enos Brower Holtz. I don't have time to read all this, and we don't want to take up your time doing that, but I do point out one comment there smack in the middle. First time he used this, the barn got really quiet there at FNR in Salina, Kansas. But as they started understanding what they were looking at up on the digital board, the didn't got rapid and he was con confident that he got at least eight to $11 premium on that day. He's a large producer in the middle of Kansas. Here's somebody who's a smaller producer, but is wanting to get good. Dennis Ankeny is on the other side. So many of us are big producers, many of us are small. But Dennis used that benchmarking tool and made decisions going forward that put him in a better position as he markets his calves up in Washington. Or again, many of you on here are, are, are seed stock folks, and you're listening how these tools might make sense for both you and your customers. And uh, the Temple family, a large seed stock outfit in Colorado, just boils it down, makes it very simple. 
These are serious seed stock people. They're users of the feeder profit calculator. They're also superior livestock customers, and they sell a lot of bulls and promote the profit calculator to their bull buyers. But Beth provided a quote, couldn't be more elegant. It's very simple and easy to submit an application, and it's well worth a couple minutes it takes. That's just practical cowboy parlance, um, in this case, cow girl wisdom, and useful for us just to see the thoughts from that from that side. Now, to this point, we've talked a lot about our, our commercial cow calf or feeder generator. But I also want to take a moment to talk about the cattle feeder because this becomes essentially a risk management tool for our cattle feeder. It is easy to view these. It's easy, it's easy to ask a producer to get one of these generated. You can either view their certificate through the app or they can send it to you. Helps you kind of get away a little bit from some of the hype and potentially maybe in your type of cattle, maybe crossbreeding has been good for you or your operation, or maybe you want more or you just want to look at particular breed types. The certificate helps you do that. And again, not necessarily ambiguous metrics. It gives you a dollar and cents view. So it, it certainly has a serious um, ability for both sides of the equation, the seller and the buyer alike. So to be sensitive to time, and there's a number of folks to listen to, I'm going to be quick and get and get ready to pass this on. But I guess I would ask you, as you're done with this and you've listened to all, all of us this evening, and it's just going to show you a variety of different options, and you can do, do something, right? If you're not doing anything, find one of these tools or a similar tool and run forward. But if a tool gives you leverage, why would you not consider it? So with that, I thank everybody for listening. I'm going to pass this thing over now to Chris Engel. Chris, as uh, Josh mentioned earlier, is with AAA and Angus Link. And Chris, there you go. Thank you, Chip. And thank you to Josh and NCBA for allowing me to participate in tonight's webinar. As Chip said, my name is Chris Engel. I work for the American Angus Association, and I'm the director of Angus Link. The Angus Association's goal is to provide tools and services to both our breeders, our members, and their customers as well for them to be successful. And Angus Link is an example of that. It's the feeder cattle program that was launched last summer, and it's a tool that is designed to help commercial cattle producers utilizing registered Angus genetics to be successful. So I don't know where y'all are at. Uh, tonight. I know it's hot here in Missouri and there's a lot of hay on the ground, but thinking back, how many of y'all have sold your calves at the same time your neighbor did and, and he got just as much as your, for, your, for his calves as you did for yours and you know he's buying bulls out of the sale barn and hasn't seen a vaccine since he had to get a tetanus booster in 2005. Does it frustrate you? It's not uh, fake news that folks buying feeder cattle, whether they're cattle feeders or stocker or background operators, want to purchase cattle that have the ability to make them a profit. They want the studs and not the duds, and something known is better than something unknown because they are all about managing their risk, and they do that by measuring all the variables that they can. But when they can't confidently identify which cattle have the ability to perform in their system, it causes a little bit of concern, and that's affected in the, in the price they bid for those cattle. But when they can identify cattle that will work in their system, they're usually willing to pay more for them, but they just can't afford to pay above average prices for cattle that won't perform the way they need them to. There's so many things that impact a calf's ability to perform profitably at the feed yard. Chip did a great job of covering a lot of those variables, but a lot of them are underneath the hide, and that's hard for buyers to distinguish the winners from the losers when they're running through the sale barn or on the video for 37 seconds. When they don't know, again, they need to err on the side of caution. But if y'all take away anything from tonight's webinar, whether it's from my presentation, from Chip's presentation, or from Jared's presentation, make it this. If you're not raising average commodity type cattle, you shouldn't sell them that way. And I mean for that, my, by that, you spend too much money, too much time, and you work too hard raising quality calves to just hope that they're gonna sell well on sale day. There's a lot more, in that, and that kind of comes the marketing is getting them in front of the folks that want them, proving what they are, and it's a win-win-win for everybody. 
And to get a differentiated price, you need to differentiate your cattle. Enrolling your cattle, enroll you to enrolling your cattle in programs to do this. Quite frankly, there's some cattle feeders and buyers that look at cattle enrolled in programs, whether whatever, regardless of the name of the program, just to help them identify cattle that are coming from good managers and they're willing to pay more for the calves, whatever, regardless of the title that's on those cattle. But let's talk about Angus Link. Angus Link is going to help you make buyers aware of the steps you've added, you've taken to add value to your calves both proving that you've used quality genetics as other management steps you've taken on the farm or ranch to set your calves up to perform well once they leave your place. So first we look at the genetic component. So Angus Link better defines value differences in feeder cattle resulting from genetics. We leverage our database similar to IGS and when we don't know uh, we can use the USDA meat animal research data uh, that's unbiased from a third party. We utilize that to define these value differences in feeder cattle. We use three scores to groups of enrolled cattle that come on the Angus Link score, which you see here on your screen. Three scores, they're modeled after the association's terminal dollar value, dollar values or the EPDs that go into those. They're based on the EPDs, both the bulls you're using to sire the calves, as well as the genetic merit of your cow herd. Both play a critical role in what that potential can be. The beef score is modeled on B, the EPDs that go into dollar B, projecting post weaning performance in both the feedlot and for the carcass. Feedlot performance score based off of dollar F looks at growth and efficiency. And then the grid score that mirrors the dollar G dollar value represents in terms of quality traits like marbling, ribeye area, fat. The, all three of the scores are on a scale of 0 to 200 with from 100 representing the industry's average feeder calf. And we don't get into dollars and cents. The genetic house is our strength and we are working every day with feeders building a network, helping them understand what the scores mean but most importantly, what they mean to them in their feed yard at this time of year, what cattle, what scores they need to get as they're gonna work well for them. So for cattle producers, these scores are basically allowing you to leverage the EPDs and the dollar values from all the bulls that you purchase to leverage them to get a return on your investment by showing the genetic merit of your calves and proving that to cattle feeders. For feeders, it allows them to objectively incorporate genetic merit into how they're evaluating cattle. It helps lessen their genetic risk. And whether cattle feeders or stocker operators are looking to, to get cattle in their system that are going to gain, are going to grade, or are going to do a combination of the two, they can utilize the Angus Links to do that. In addition to the Angus Link scorecard, all groups of cattle that are enrolled in Angus Link get a marketing certificate, which also has other steps you've taken on the farm or ranch to add value to your calves and set them up to perform well the next place they go. And that's important to performance, there's no doubt about it. Feeders want solid health, they want cattle that are managed well, weaning is big. Cattle need to be healthy in order to ever have the ability to even meet their genetic potential but you can provide more detail on what you're doing to add value to your calves with the health protocol you're using. You can include the product you're using, the products, when you're giving them or when you plan to give them. You can detail your nutrition program, your weaning and preconditioning practices. You can identify any branded vaccine programs or health protocols you're in or any USDA process verified programs you're also enrolled in. And then important, you can also list when and where you're selling your calves, include lot details, even the representative who's representing your cattle. Provide as much or as little information as you want in this marketing certificate. But for cattle producers who enroll in Angus Link, you have the option if you want to make your Angus Link marketing certificate public or not. And if you do, the American Angus Association Commercial Program staff will work with you with the sale barn or video sale company you plan to sell your calves through 
to help promote your cattle, get them in front of a wider audience of prospective buyers. We want to increase awareness to increase interest in your cattle, and that interest will turn into more bids on sale day. So as we're working with feeders in and out every year, our, we're, we're, we're getting tickets that are made public in front of them to help them identify cattle that are selling that are going to work for them. We'll also list your Angus Link Marketing Certificate on the program's website on the Find Cattle page, which is the second most viewed page on the website. We'll also include your certificate and email that goes out weekly to a list of over 800 buyers. So we wanted Angus Link, enrolling in Angus Link to be simple. And we know that there's a thousand things you need to be doing, and time is sometimes hard to come by this time of year, but really any time of year. Enroll in Angus Link online, or you can give us a call at the office, and we'll help you to get enrolled. There's really basic information you need to provide. Chip did a great job hitting the nail on the head. We want a list of bulls that you use to sire your calves, known bulls with registration numbers, but also bulls that you've used historically that have impacted the genetic merit of your cow herd. Can, the predominantly, they need to be registered Angus bulls. We also allow for some non-Angus bulls as well. You don't need to worry about and spend a lot of time digging around your records for registration papers. Who have purchased registered Angus bulls? If they have been transferred to you, we will have a list of all the bulls that you need to go when you're ready to enroll. Whether it's online, you can click to automatically upload it or over the phone. Breed description of your cow herd, basic uh, breed description, as little as 20% Hereford, 80% Angus. But again, if you want that contribution from the cow side to have a higher likelihood of impacting your calf score positively, you don't want us to guess because when we have to do that, we need to do it very conservatively. The best way to get that cow contribution up is to provide us up to 10 years of historical bulls that you've used, retain females from the genetics or in the cow herd. In addition to cows and the bulls, you need to tell us about the calves you're enrolling, how many of them. You also need uh, to have a basic health protocol. Again, we all know that health is critical. Animals won't meet their genetic potential if they're not healthy. So to enroll in Angus Link, all calves that are in the group need to receive at least modified live viral vaccine or two doses of a killed equivalent, one dose of a black leg vaccine, seven, eight, or nine way, and one Pasteurella vaccine prior to shipment. And if you go above the requirements, you can detail that fully on your marketing certificate when you enroll or later on when you get the dates prior to your sale day. So if you enroll today in the next link, it's $4 ahead, but that includes a visual tag that you can have management ID on for up to five letters or numbers. And let's just talk about real quick as I as I work towards wrapping this up, what Angus Link is and what it what it isn't, what it does and what it doesn't do. Angus Link does help you give buyers more information. Data is big, it's going to be getting better, bigger. They want more information to help them manage risk. It helps you differentiate your calves from other calves which is important because, again, they all look right about the same in, in 37 seconds. They, they are running through the ring or on the video. And then it opens up your cash to a wider audience to increase bidding interest. But what Angus Link doesn't do is sell broker or buy your calves. The relationships that you have with Sale Barn or video sale company that you sell your calves with is very important, and they provide you a lot of value. And we don't want to interfere with those relationships, replace those relationships by any means. We want to come up alongside you and your rep or the company or barn that you're selling your calves through to help increase that interest in your cattle. We don't guarantee harvest data back on your cattle. And I guess the saying goes that whoever owns the cattle when they're killed owns the data, whether that's the packer or the feeder. And that data is theirs. They own it. It's up to them to share it. Certainly, it's a high priority for us to track down this data to make sure these scores are translating well to performance. If we get the data and we get the permission of the feeder or whomever owned them last to share it to you, we'll definitely do that. And lastly, Angus Link scores won't determine what the sale price of your calves is going to be. 
I almost get a question every time I present what the what's the premium that I'll get for enrolling in Angus Lane. In good faith, I can't promise you that they will. The scores, again, are not only identifying cattle that are above average for terminal traits for carcass and growth, but average cattle, average cattle as well. Different buyers are valuing different types of cattle, but what they can do is utilize the Angus Link scores different in addition to other variables that are important, like load size, feed cost, yard conditions, projected harvest dates, to determine what they will pay for your calves at that sale on that day. And I'll be honest, I've sold groups of cattle enrolled in Angus Link for $25 more per hundred compared to similar cattle in their sex class in that sale. We've sold some groups in price, some for less, but when you look at eight sales that Angus Link cattle had sold through, in which over 500 steers sold, about 8,000 Angus Link steers averaged just over $2.37 per hundred weight, more than the unrolled, which is about $16 a head, which is a pretty good return on the $4 investment to enroll. And again, if your scores aren't where you want them to be, your scorecard serves as a way for you to benchmark genetic progress in your herd so you can make your next calf crop better than the last. Again, one thing I'll just say as a caution is that the scores are all based on terminal traits. and You don't want to get caught chasing Angus Link scores if you plan to retain females because you can get in trouble down the road with unintentional consequences that uh, you'll you'll realize in your cow herd. But I encourage you to, to use that scorecard to work with that or to select bulls that'll help you meet your objectives. Whether you want to chase the highest score and the highest Angus Link scores you possibly can, you're buying your females someplace else, or if you just have the objective of getting above average calves while also being able to retain female calves that'll make good cows, productive cows in your environment. In addition to Angus Link, the association has Angus Source Program, and I'll just mention it real quick that you might recognize. Process Verified Program has been expanded to include certification, standard screws, cattle care and handling, which is an extension of UA, calf modified health protocol, as well as the newest edition, Angus Sire Genetics which verifies that your calf crop is sired by 100% Angus bulls. Any video, they've been selling pretty good and it could be later your calves by providing the market and buy them. Learn more about the Angus commercial programs, AngusLink.com or AngusSource.com including special combination pricing when you dual enroll in both programs. You can call our commercial program staff, you can call me directly. I hope I have the opportunity to work with you in the future and help you differentiate your calves and capture that value you've added to them. That's all I had and uh, I'm going to go ahead and send it over to you. All right, can everybody hear me? Sounding good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move forward like everybody can hear me talking. So I would like to obviously thank NCBA for this opportunity, uh, as well as uh, enjoy, always enjoy doing stuff with uh, Chip and Chris. Uh, see you guys a lot through my travels and have known Chip for a long time. So that's uh Thought this would be fun when I was asked to do this a few months ago. So I'm going to try to plow right into this uh, data-driven value webinar, kind of cover the basis on what Top Dollar does, what we are, what we do, uh, the world we live in, and how we take the data that we uh, assemble on group 
purchase a feeder cattle and use that to connect you to the industry. So real quick, I'll cover that first uh, screen. I used it because it's an awesome picture. Uh, thought it looked cool and impressed everybody. So I threw that up on the very first slide. Uh, that's actually a picture got a few weeks ago at Wagonhammer Angus Ranch, one of our 120 seed stock partners, coast to coast. So we are the largest genetic verification and marketing assistance company servicing Angus and Red Angus seed stock partners, as well as industry partners and their customers all across the lower 48 in Canada. So when I say industry partners, that would include uh, some of the uh, strategic partnerships we're beginning to form or have formed. We've got a great relationship with Method Genetics that <clears throat> it is completely my fault that I have not expanded on that as much as we have, just simply being busy. But uh, uh, if you ever want to check out a database that truly has power behind it from a data standpoint, you will not find one that is more powerful than theirs when it comes to information on Angus cattle. It's just the sheer number of phenotype records they have from birth to harvest is uh, is substantial. So to be able to use that as a metric to help our customers uh, is exciting to me. Would like to delve into that more, as well as our partners that uh, we're finding in the industry, such as Lex Sires and some of the other semen companies. We're really starting to get some stuff done with this. So keep an eye on that. <clears throat> we will have more to announce. Uh, hopefully over the next month or more with some additional stuff we're working on, I think will be exciting. But uh, really quick, let me make sure I'm... Okay, so what does Top Dollar Angus do? Um, kind of just uh, go through it real quick. We are a vetting or a verification company or third party auditor of populations of cattle. Calves, feeders, heifers, grass yearlings, cows, you name it. We, we look at populations of cattle um, and try to determine, uh, I'm gonna steal somebody's terminology that uh, they just used in a meeting I had last week, but we try to determine that 24 karat gold and separate it from the pack. And that there's nothing wrong with commodity cattle. Um, that is an industry that will always be around, uh, understand how it functions and how it works. But what we are looking for is that upper crust, that upper 25% of the genetic population so that we can uh, move forward. We very much have short, intermediate, long-term goals for our business. Um, and I like that. I mean, we are very enterprise-driven uh, work to uh, uh, you know, work within the confines of the, the beef industry as it currently is. Day to day, I am on the phone, texting, messaging, emailing, ranches, cattle buyers, cattle feeders, seed stock partners, all in between doing our best to provide service through that matrix of uh, uh, relationships that we have <clears throat> across the country. But we use tools and resources to document genetic potential so that we can help add more precision to cattle procurement. Because in a sense, that's what we are. All of us here talking tonight, uh, circle the wagons on precision ag. Uh, being able to mitigate risk for each stakeholder in a supply chain. <clears throat> being able to tell somebody this ranch has done what they, they can do to purchase better genetics to improve that group of cattle. And they have also done all these other little things that go with it to make those cattle as valuable as possible, or IE as low risk as possible. Because I know the word value add gets thrown around a ton, but I'm gonna tell you guys, we don't live in a value added industry. We live in a discount driven industry. And pretend that you are starting out with a feeder calf population that's two feet in the ground. <clears throat> and what we do is we do everything we can to help you fill that hole back in with dirt to get you back up to ground level, ground zero, where you can get hopefully for that weight class, for that flesh, for the evenness in that you know group of cattle, et cetera, for that region, the top price that we can get you for that uh, um you know, all those variables added together, which would be in a sense ground zero. To get above that is almost impossible. Anybody that can tell you you're gonna get X amount premiums over this is, is it's, um, it's very tough to do. That's not how the industry works. What we wanna be able to do is help take what you have done, your hard work and segregate it from the pack. Share that with the other stakeholders and then act as a risk mitigation tool for the people upstream. You know, we have cattle feeders that we work with very closely. I've got some that I, I, I do some buying and some bidding for on a regular basis. It is my job to help 
connect them to your cattle based on the genetics and the other information regarding what the potential value of those cattle you know, would be. So moving forward. <clears throat> so let's take a look at value added marketing through verification or should we say discount removal marketing through verification. So you've got genetic verification programs like Top Dollar Angus. You've got breed verification programs like the Red Angus uh, uh, FCCP tagging program and then IMI's new Black Angus Verified Beef tagging program, which, which they go in to verify that at least 50% or more of your population of feeder cattle um, are documented black or red angus. And so we only work with black and red angus populations that are at least 50% or greater of either one of those two breeds. Uh, we actually work with a lot of uh, Angus Shark Cross, Red Angus Shark Cross. That's, that's a very popular feeder cattle uh, a group. Uh, we get requests for a lot of that. We work with a lot of feeders who I'm sure like 50 to three quarters or 50% to three quarter black or red Angus and Shark Cross, some Sim Cross, uh, even some good balancer cross cattle. We've got one customer in California that has a tremendous set of three quarter ish Angus quarter um, Geldy, which would be some you know older balancer influence. That's really good cattle that do a good job. And we were able to help that customer get two groups of those uh, steers headed uh, one group uh, on feed out west and one group to Iowa. So those populations do have value and can work. And that is our job is to work within that ranch confine up to the old you know, the feeder uh, to from the ranch to the feeder and everybody in between to be a resource. And you got program verification, NHTC, non-hormone treated cattle, verified natural beef, GAP4, et cetera. And then you got your health verifications. I kind of swipe those off Superior's website to give you examples of your back 24s, your back 34s, your back 45. So those kind of give you an idea what verification programs are all about how they exist and a little bit of a breakdown in between them. Um, our verification platform is free of charge. Uh, it, we, we are there working for our seed stock and industry partners for you on their behalf. Uh, I'll get into that in a second, but we've got them all over the country. So the vast majority of the best black and red Angus producers in this country work with us. They, they in a sense, unleash us to help work for their customers, uh, to provide extra service to those customers. Um, and, you know, it all starts with that evaluation. Do your cattle qualify as top 25%? Are they that next cut, that upper crust that we want to be able to understand every bit of information about those cattle so we can connect them upstream. We work for their customers on behalf of them simply because those customers, it's a way of rewarding those customers for doing business with them and, and investing in those better genetics. So we use EPDs, genomic data such as DNA, as well as historical past closeout records. We get a, we get a fair amount of closeout information on the cattle we work with simply because we stay connected uh, to the industry so much. Uh, we, you know, whether it's a complete closeout to as far as the feeding and the killing or the harvest side to just some other information, some, some very minor details, we work very hard so that we can, uh, you know, use that as ways to, to help the ranch improve genetics, to improve performance, to improve, you know, having a win, so to speak, on sale day. Um, and sometimes it's, it's uh, depending on how the cattle moved, whether it's through our, our relationship with uh, video reps like uh, Superior and Cattle Country and Western, et cetera, and Bluegrass. Uh, you know, we work with those reps to help them help their customers. So sometimes it's, hey, getting this data so we can help you be uh, more effective in your ability to help that customer. So to verify and document cattle that collectively rank in the top 25%, like I said, we use that information along with other factors involved when cattle are evaluated for procurement. I'm telling you guys, everything we're talking about tonight is moot if health is nothing. I mean, that is the biggest thing. I mean, you can have cattle that, that do 100% choice or better, 38% primes and 6% fours and no fives. And if for you guys don't know what that means, that is a very good performance on a grid. And if three or four of them die in the last 45 days, <clears throat> doesn't matter, they lost money. So even this flesh, weight class, weigh up condition, sex, shrink, et cetera, all affect the potential outcome of the value of those cattle. Okay, to protect the margin, to help add precision to the buyer. 
Okay, we have to understand all those dynamics and work with them and live with them every day like we do. Um, we also use that to help the seller derive more value for the beef they produced. If you're investing in those better genetics with a Gardner Angus, if you're investing in those better genetics with a, a, a Craig Beaver and Beaver Red Angus, we are there to help them help you build a profile of what the potential is for those cattle and then work as hard as we can to help connect them and to find the people who want those cattle. So we work to make sure each side has a win. Okay, so top dollar Angus <clears throat> keeps working well after the brand goes on. As we've been talking, it's not just about saying, hey, you qualify, congratulations. Here's your, <clears throat> here's your badge you get to throw on them, a certificate with all this stuff listed. That's just, that's where we get started, guys. That is 100% where we get going. Okay, <clears throat> if cattle qualify to be branded as top dollar, our team gets to work connecting those cattle to groups uh, throughout the network of feed yards, marketing agents, et cetera. Whatever venue you sell in, whether it's a sale barn, video, country trade, we are there to help whoever's leveraged in your marketing process to assist them. That's what they're there for. We're there to assist everybody at each, each level, the feeding level, the marketing level, the seed stock level, and the ranch level, and to be a resource and to help facilitate uh, the more precision um i guess to be more precise as again i'm gonna reiterate that with with the per procurement of cattle um <clears throat> so cost it's four dollars per head plus a one-time annual enrollment fee now the vast majority of our producers or ranches we work with that enrollment fee is paid for by their seed stock partner that is the benefit of our program it is a way of rewarding you for doing business with us um, the $4 per head does not get charged out until those cattle sell. Last week across the country from coast to coast on <clears throat> all the video markets that are that uh, we had uh, bluegrass, uh, western, uh, superior, uh, we had over 4,000 head of cattle sell. Um, and that's that is up from 400 percent from a year ago. We are by far the fastest growing uh, entity in the market. Uh, and I think a lot of it's because of the service we provide, the fact that we live in the industry. If, you know, and, and, and the other thing going back, I'm not going to sit there and tell you that this thing works every time because it doesn't. <clears throat> and that's the value of getting that closeout data. You know, if, if there's a couple groups of cattle just in the last few months that we got closeout data back on and they weren't as good as what we were hoping they would be. And then those, you know, we have to continue to adjust and learn and tweak our metric and what we use and the information we gather and how we work within this, uh, the infrastructure of the industry. So it is not black and white. <clears throat> there is no grand tool that's gonna tell you everything you need to know, no score, nothing. You have to get in there and really know everybody's, um, I mean, what, what brings value to every person within the confines of how the industry actually works and then understand how to deliver the information we uncover to each person because it really does have value. <clears throat> and then to be in to work at the, the fat buyer level. I mean, we have several fat buyers we work with across the country that we share information with about where cattle go, who needs cattle, who needs what. And then we can help to begin to drive some of those cattle to some of the spots where some of these packers want to get them. You know, whether they're going uh, to one, uh, it, it, and, and here's the other thing, we, it, we believe naturally for whatever reason that a lot more cattle are sold on a grid than really are. Now there are regions where it is very intensive as far as grid sales, but there are an awful lot of cattle feeders that sell live and have others leveraged or invested into that marketing of those cattle. You have to understand that and be able to del you know, deliver that information to those people as well. And so it's not simply just, hey, here's this and um, this is where they rank. <clears throat> it is specific pieces of information that we pull out from the documentation that we gather that we can then communicate and connect to everybody along that value chain that has their hands and are invested. Every stakeholder is who we have to be able to build communication profiles for in a sense to be able to drive that value to them so that we can be able to put together what we believe or we see happening from a industry standpoint as far as the, some of the supply chain dynamics that are starting to take place because guys 
we are focused on the upper crust of the cattle industry. There's no reason that you cannot continue to feed commodity cattle. That will always happen. We are specifically right here for a reason because you don't build supply chains around commodity cattle. <clears throat> Nobody's going to pay 75 bucks in a Ruth Chris steakhouse for a steak for a steer that's or a, a, a calf that started out as a stag in three uh, three sale barns in the southeast and it went on feed. Just there's no story behind it. There's no supply chain dynamic behind it. The industry is slowly moving and migrating that direction. So we we work within those confines to help facilitate some of that change. So okay. seed stock and industry partners. Like I said, we've got 120 of we feel and growing. I mean we add them by the week. Uh, the best Angus and Red Angus breeders coast to coast, as well as some cattle, some guys that are breeding some or composite cattle and Canada. Um, very proud to have Cudlobes as a part of the top dollar team. They're very well known for their certified Angus beef uh, genetics in Canada. We work with these partners to help them provide extra service to their customers of producing top dollar quality feeder cattle or placement heifers. So a complete list can be found on our website, as well as testimonials, and that's growing by the, <clears throat> the week. Um, real quick, I stole this from a uh, Red Angus um, uh, field staff, Katie, and she sent it to me just to give me an example. And so right now this is a Red Angus graph. And so top dollar Angus seed stock partners represent 30% of Angus producers. And of those 30%, you can see the disparaging or the difference, the differentiation between those partners that we work with, that we help their customers that are producing the upper end uh, Red Angus genetics and what they average on their bull sales versus those that don't. So I just kind of threw that into last minute. And my last slide, because it's cool, I like that picture. Uh, follow us on social media. You'll see our team at work every day. I guarantee you, we're working with cattle all over the country every day, gathering that information using those genetics, verifying that those cattle are 50% black or red Angus. If they're, if they're 50% something else, we got to know. We got to know what your cow herd is. We, you cannot draw accurate assumptions without it. So I just want to uh, make sure you understand that, that we are a fully documentation uh, or fully vetted in documenting not only the cow side, but the calf population. So information about your bulls, because what you don't know is exactly what you don't know. And, you know, if you've got a set of really good Angus bulls on a set of tiger stripes, that's okay. You may not qualify for the program. We could still help you, but we just have to be able to know how to communicate that information. Those cattle may be highly profitable, you know, depending on how they're traded. But if here's the deal. A venomous snake will never hurt you if you know where he's at. And that, in a sense, is you know my my cliche phrase there to say that we don't want our partners getting bit at any time and we can help add value by being able to remove some of those danger zones or uh, items that create too much risk for anybody that is a stakeholder in that value chain so anyways thanks to everybody involved uh, if you guys have any questions uh fire it away All right, thanks, Jared. We'll uh, we'll get to questions right away. I did just want to do a quick plug for NCBA's summer business meeting um, before we switch to Q and A. And I do have a few questions uh, coming in, so feel free to jump in and, and add your questions. We should be able to get to most of them tonight. These guys did a great job finishing right at an hour, um, but you see the information there on your screen. Hopefully, visit uh, ncba.org. Click on the events tab and you can figure out uh, what goes on at summer business meeting. All the details will be there. We'd love to have your input. That's really where the business on both the policy committees as well as beef checkoff committee meetings where producers are setting priority on how to spend your checkoff dollars. All that happens at our summer business meeting every year. Love to see you there. Um, let's get to questions. Um, and uh, all of my presenters, just a reminder to unmute yourself if you're uh, if you're muted as you get ready to answer these questions. Jared, you brought up tiger stripes, and we did have a one question about uh, a little er that was submitted a little earlier because no one had mentioned uh, Brahma influence in your cow herd. Uh, maybe each of you just uh, sort of give us a quick rundown on how that's accounted for. I know some of you mentioned other breeds, but didn't specifically mention Brahma influence, so. 
how do you handle that in your program? Uh, you know, sort of what's the tolerance level? How much percentage of Brahma do you think you can can work with your program, or or do you have a rule of thumb on that? I'll uh, I'll tackle that one since I mentioned it, uh, and I'm getting my Snapchat's getting blown up uh, because of it. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, you know, we we do not typically and have not to date worked with Brahmin influence breeds simply because it presents a wild card for us that we cannot um, isolate. There are there there is tremendous value in those cattle. I know uh i write about it you know i i understand it i i work with plenty of herds in the south and plenty of friends that that uh, you know my brothers and sisters in the southern tier i mean i understand the value of those cattle we simply have not delved into that because we just do not know how to add enough precision to that from a top 25 percent standpoint and that's a, that's as good as i can do i wish i had a better answer i think some of those cattle can be tremendously profitable from a you know, carcass standpoint. I have seen enough uh, information on some, certain populations that do well. We know what the King Ranch has done. That's been very well documented. I mean, I've talked to Tyler about that uh, multiple times. I know there's some neat stuff going on with them uh, right now. Uh, so, I, it that we don't. I think that's the best way to answer. It. We simply don't know enough um, to be able to offer a high enough level of insurance. Uh, assurance to our to our stakeholders of, uh, upstream to work with those populations. So I'm not di di downgrading those cattle at all. Uh, and uh, now my Snapchat's blowing up again. So you're welcome, guys. I just uh, so anyways, go ahead. Next, I'm tapped out. All right, uh, uh, this is Chris for uh, All breeds on the cow herd. Uh, we look at their. EPDs, we translate them to an Angus base that go into how we get those scores. We do incorporate a little bit of hybrid vigor to be realistic with commercial calves and with the bulls. The requirement is that the biggest majority of your bulls have to be registered Angus bulls, but there are bulls that can be registered with other breed associations or non-registered bulls that have a good breed description. And when we need to fill in any blanks in the absence of information and confidence in EPD or genetic merit of those animals, we have to, uh, to weight it very conservatively, uh, not to overscore cattle, have them not perform that way, uh, but, but if anything, have them perform better than how they're scored. Chip? This, yeah, from an IGS standpoint, uh, again, to be clear, our, our job is to provide a profit prediction and profit, uh, despite popular opinion here in the last number of years. Profit doesn't always come in the same way, and cattle feeders certainly know that. Some cattle make money because they gain better, um, and they're in and out, and they move on, and maybe they don't cut quite as well, and, and others uh, make money because uh, they just knock it out of the park on the rail. Our job is to provide a profit prediction at IGS, and we recognize some are going to dig into the uh, the individual components of that, appropriately so, as, as they're cattle feeders and they specialize in certain things. Um, so because of that, we're not limited to the breed types based on any sort of preconceived position. Um, our only limitation on breed types is do they have enough genetic awareness through their own platforms to be effectively utilized? And so we use a lot of Brahmin, Brangus, beef master type genetics, in particular on the cow herd side, that's fairly common for us. Um, one of the challenges on the top side, on the sire side, and, and a number of those associations are working aggressively to solve it, uh, there are some limitations in uh, their EPD awareness of carcass traits and the comparability of that to other breeds. Those are internal dynamics that make it a little bit challenging really for any verifier uh, to, to dig too deep into there. So um, those are things that we're working aggressively with some of those folks on to help identify, but we're certainly welcome to uh, uh, to provide profit predictions and IGS information on cattle that are derived from a lot of Brahmin influenced cows and do it quite frequently. Great, thanks for that uh, great answer. Uh, Chris, why don't we start with you um, on this one. If um, none of you really mentioned much about genomic testing, so um, just give us uh, your 
you know, based on your program, what does genomic testing of the bulls add, or does it add anything to uh, to how they're uh, counted in your program? All right, so we uh, do. Bulls to hey, Chris, you faded out just a little bit on us there. Uh, speak up a bit and, and start again, if you don't mind. So bulls that are interested, they're used um, with their EPs to get uh, the, the whole battery distribution. Bulls do the carcass EPDs and they can get get um, uh, beef. or have like animals in their pedigree that have had it done and traits we need to um, again put in concerns of actual information and we do that in this style of the respective breeds. Josh, this is Chip. Would you like me to follow Chris? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, clearly genomics are uh, a valuable tool, and, and we all appreciate the added awareness they bring to the table. And I think all of us recognize that genomics are most powerful when they are used through the prism of EPDs, genomically enhanced EPDs. That's where the, the most power from genomic information comes. And I think if you talk to the DNA firms, uh, they would confirm that. Now, we also recognize that there in, are, are cases where folks aren't in a position to, to use genomics in that fashion. Um, and, and we are working aggressively, I think, in the fairly near future. We'll have some mechanisms for them. But that's down the road because really our goal is to try to encourage folks to use the most powerful version of genetic awareness and that's using genomics through the through the prism of EPDs and so um, absolutely use them all the time um, but but that's the way we get them into the system we believe well there's no belief that the facts just are and I think any extension specialist any uh, serious uh, geneticist will tell you that uh, genomics have the, the most value when we incorporate them with phenotypes and pedigree information. That's when we provide the most robust knowledge. So that's how we do it. My turn. Anything to add to that, Jared? Yeah, I'll just hit on a couple of real things uh, or a couple of things real quick. Um, the vast majority of our seed stock partners use genomic enhanced EPDs uh, in their own herds as well as uh, the bulls they sell. So a lot of the a lot of the herds or ranches that we work with are already already benefiting from that. And then, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the Method Genetics uh, partnership uh, I I feel real strongly about. But we work with other companies. I mean, we I've got a lot of good friends that work with Neogen and, and had a great time uh, being able to work and help them service their customers and vice versa. We had a set of cattle sold a couple of weeks of here, a weeks ago here on Jot on Primetime Video, several loads of cattle, very high quality cattle, an express ranch customer. And we we actually qualified those cattle for top dollar based on their DNA scores that were set up on an indexing system through uh, their Neogen rep. <clears throat> so we also work with uh, you know customers that use the GeneMax test. And so we have to uh, work within the confines of all the companies that exist out there to uh, identify their metrics, uh, how to use them, how best to service their customers with them. So, so yeah, I guess that kind of covers it. Awesome. What if uh, if I'm uh, retaining ownership in cattle uh, that I've bred? Um, maybe I'm making that decision year to year. Um, explain the value of what you what your tools offer to me. <clears throat> Jared, do you want to start? Yeah, we've got several customers we work with that either retain ownership or investors that uh, want to. Uh, by a retained ownership position within uh, certain groups of cattle. So no different than relaying that information to a marketing agent or a cattle feeder and trying to get the uh, 
the bits and pieces of, of the data that is going to directly influence their profitability uh, you know, in, in the language that they best uh, understand because they all speak a different one. Um, and so if you are, you know, for example, we had a, a customer here uh, within Missouri that uh, had a group of his own steers that we went out and helped him identify another group of steers actually used, I'll throw another bone, uh, a methogenetics customer, used their data, identified those steers, put the two groups together uh, with this individual through his marketing agent and then uh, uh, hooked them up with a feeder who owned the other 50% of them. And so uh, we were able to identify the strengths and weaknesses of his cattle as well as the other groups of cattle and say, hey, this is, uh, you know, this is probably where you want to price them to yourself because we don't, we don't do that. We let the marketing agents do that, but we can deliver that information to that marketing agent so he could intelligently talk to those customers or effectively communicate with them about how they should do that based on what those cattle should do, based on the board they're going to kill on, based on all these other factors that, that way, you know, will affect that, <clears throat> that chance to be profitable. So yeah, that that's something that we 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 deal with uh, on a fairly off or a fairly regular basis. Um, so it, it would be delivering basically the same kind of information, and then they have to make the the value judgment at that time uh, based on risk. You know, their risk assessment of where they want to be as to where they want to do that. You know, is 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 are the dynamics and the fundamentals within the industry set up for them to go ahead and take that risk position, or are they going to take a smaller risk position and go ahead and market those cattle? And uh, we are there to kind of help communicate between all levels and say, hey, this is this is maybe the decision you should make with this group or roll on if you et cetera. from our standpoint you know on the years that they do choose not to retain ownership by partnering their their uh, the support from angus link for marketing their calves with that actual performance data that will really do a great job of grabbing the attention of cattle feeders that'll be interested multiple cattle feeders that'll be interested in getting those cattle to turn into bids and, and you know that the three scores are boiling down dozens of epds that, that might help um, benchmark to a certain extent we have those EPDs correlating to, to performance, but and those scores as well to track it. But. Yeah, from, from an IGS standpoint, I, I think the gentlemen have both said some, some pretty powerful and common sense things. We talk about the profit calculator as a risk management tool for the cattle buyer. And in this case, it just happens to be the same individual. So I, I think that gives them, uh, you know, tremendous amount of power to make some decisions internally. Is this a wise decision at this point in time? Does it make sense given where I'm at as an individual, given my risk tolerance, given where the industry's at? And um, as a bonus, it becomes a benchmarking tool going forward. And so as they're pondering how they uh, are evolving relative to the terminal merit uh, of their calf crop over time and over years, um, it can help them maybe this isn't the year they want to be a cattle feeder. Maybe they've looked at it and there are some concerns. Um, maybe they've approached some folks that they'd like to feed cattle with and those folks have concerns. And so maybe they, they push it down the road, but they can use this tool as a, uh, as a benchmark for when they're looking for new opportunities. And then, you know, for those who are cattle feeders um, on the call, we, we all know that um, anytime we straight breed anything, our, our, our cows don't last as long. They're not as fertile. And in the same vein, our feeder calves and ultimately fat calves, if they're straight bred of anything, uh, tend to, to lose some toughness, lose some durability, sacrifice a variety of things. And so sometimes tools like the profit calculator can help uh, highlight responsible crossbreeding to you know, minimize some of the risk, in particular late-term death loss and things like that in the feed yard, um, just as we make them a little tougher. Excellent. And Chip, why don't you start on this one? Uh, this is pretty quick question um, so regardless of breed if uh, if a producer has some carcass data uh, from the past few years is there any way to incorporate that or help them out in the, in your respective systems chip you can go first sure. um, again this goes a little bit back to the genomics question and a, and a slightly different angle on it from a few moments ago and that is how do we best use knowledge and so 
the best manner to use knowledge, it's not the only way, but the best manner to use knowledge is to get it incorporated into a structured eval approach. Um, it, it improves the quality of the data and thus the quality of the output. So my strongest encouragement would be for folks who have carcass data, um, communicate with their seed stock providers. It's potential that there's a potential that that data might be able to be incorporated possibly in a way that could be useful. Um, so that's the most effective way. Um, through the profit calculator tool specifically, we don't use that data directly from a uh, standpoint of, well, last year they did, you know, they were X percent choice and so many fours and fives and so on and so forth, and then predict forward. And the reason we don't, and here's the concern, and I know it's a common position in the industry where cattle buyers in particular will say, well, my history with that operation says they'll do this over and over and, and understand that to a large extent. With the challenge, let's just say at my operation, dad's been making most of the bull buying decisions for a while. And all of a sudden, maybe two or three years ago, I started making the bull buying decisions. And so maybe I went in a different direction. And so that historical view of the raw data that actually was pretty stable for a long period of time may all of a sudden look radically different. And so as a result, while in some ways it sounds like a logical way to um, predict, and in some cases it can be, in other cases it can be vastly and wildly different than what one in, would anticipate. So we don't use that directly in the profit calculator. We don't use it directly in the uh, Angus Link scores either, but we can include it in the Angus Link marketing certificate, which uh, several enrollees have done. And again, that's really grabbed the attention of cattle feeders. Uh, it's my turn simply because of the way we have, we have structured our our company with regards to things that we are also working on upstream. I applaud you if you have cattle that are not what we have talked about tonight, as far as the you know Angus influence, Red Angus influence, et cetera, that we would normally work with. That is, that's a great achievement. Uh, however, we work with those populations primarily simply because of some other things that drive value above the packer level to the consumer that are tied to that word Angus, and so I, I, we're probably not going to be able to help you much there. But however, I do applaud you that you have gotten a set of cattle to do that. I mean that that is very important. Uh, but uh, you know, we are very much tied to seeking out those populations that are at least 50% or more black or red Angus influenced. Uh, and so I guess that uh, would cover that. So Jared, if even within the, those breed groups that you're talking about that you're specializing in, if they have past carcass data on groups of calves, can you use that data in your program? Yeah, mentioned that uh, in the slideshow. That is part of that closeout information that builds a documented portfolio or profile that uh, would then help uh, vet those populations. So we use a lot of that data all the time. We've got multiple groups of cattle we're working with right now that we have several years worth of not only feeding data but uh you know harvest data um so yeah, yeah that absolutely um if you are a population that would qualify potentially for top dollar that kind of information is extremely valuable it, it is one more piece of information that we use that we can break down to then effectively communicate those results upstream and like we say connect people to people with so yeah very important Great. Um, well, thanks again, guys. We're going to do one more question. I do have several questions that are really specific to a particular herd, and um, I will forward those to our speakers uh, because I'll, it'll attach to an email address from, from you. So if you didn't get your question answered during the call tonight, we will try to get you uh, a one-on-one -on -one follow up with these guys. Uh, thanks again for all the great questions. The the final question is, you know, the market dynamics change different times of year. There's a different choice select spread or other um, variables that affect value. Um, how flexible is your program and your approach to take into account seasonality 
changes in the marketplace, uh, et cetera. And if you want to start, Jared, we'll go back through the other way. I would say we live it. So it's uh, it's as it as the as the market adjusts, we work within the confines of how the market currently works within our network uh, that we have put together and are growing. So yeah, I mean I I float around the country. Those of you that follow me on social media know that I'm I'm almost always on the road. Um, and by by the season, it changes where I am. When the feeder calf runs start in the fall uh, and the grass cattle, et cetera that's where I am. When the video sales are going full blast over the summer periods, that's where I'm at. Um, so it's it very much so that we, we, we are constantly on the fly adjusting to all the dynamics for every region, for every season um, within those breeds that we work with. So, you know, from four weights all the way up to a thousand pounders and everything in between. variables definitely impact uh, the the industry functions the dynamics of the industry while while those variables associated with the cost don't affect the scores directly certainly it affects the way we're approaching feeders with groups of cattle that are scored uh, and, and maybe shifts when they're looking at those scores depending on input cost to, to maybe pivot and go um, sell them earlier or or hit a different market on on how they choose to then sell those cattle uh, maybe when they're going quality typically they, they'll switch to yield to get pounds or vice versa um, but those scores are looking at the genetic performance potential and then how that potential combined with health translates to to be profitable for feeders given their objectives uh, this is chip uh, from an igs standpoint um, well, frankly, for all of us, the reality is all of us on this call are leveraging the best genetic tool that's presently known in the business, and that's an EPD. And so when EPDs are, are done effectively and appropriately, they're going to impact um, fairly evenly all the animals in these conversations in, in terms of at least the seasonality impact on those. And so the underlying principles don't necessarily change for any of us based on seasonality, but as they've each mentioned, there are some basic pragmatic things that come to play. For example, because ours is a profit prediction, there are some changes. If we're looking at the same set of calves as five weights, their total relative value through the IGS system is going to be a higher number, likely, than that same set of calves if they're held until they're eight weights. In much the same way that the value per 100 goes down for calves as they get heavier as a rule, and we're used to that, well, the range of profit potential on a set of calves is gonna shrink as there's less time for the next owner to take advantage of that, as they get farther away from the weaning exercise, and so health isn't quite as big a concern as it was as a lighter calf. And so that sort of seasonality in terms of how the weights change throughout the course of the year, in particular relative to a specific set of calves, can change the total relative value uh, fairly greatly. So that is probably the biggest impact on the profit calculator scores. I'll add some to that if that's all right. I'll tell you, <clears throat> you can have, uh, it doesn't matter what metric you use, you can have two identical sets of feeder cattle, one that'll kill in April and one that'll kill in June, and there's nothing anybody can do to make that set that kills in June bring what those that, that'll kill in April will bring. It's just impossible. You can feed them cubes from your hand and te teach them how to wink at you and it doesn't matter. <clears throat> the, the market they kill on is one of the biggest drivers of what the value of those cattle is on that day for that region, for their weight class, etc. You could have two identical sets of calves, clone them, do whatever you want to to them, sell one in October as seven weights and one in November as, as seven weights, and there's a huge difference in their value, simply because of when they will kill. Delivery dates make a huge amount of information. So there are things that affect the value of these cattle well beyond us, which is why we have to work in those trenches and explain to these uh, pr producers we're working with, hey, for where you're at, this is maybe how, you know, how to look at this um, scenario from a top dollar standpoint, this is what you have and then work in the confines to try to drive as much value for those 
external circumstances that do exist. Um, it's just there's so many of them. But that uh, you know, as the time changes, the region changes. Tell if you are a ranch and wanting to learn more, watch that live board. Okay, when you sell, will will be directly affected by the value that is in that live board, the region that the buyers might be in, their basis at the time, whether it's positive or negative, based on the board they're gonna kill on. Genetics being equal, you cannot make one group that'll kill 45 days later be worth more or as much as the other. It's just, it's not working within the fundamentals of the, of the, of the way the system currently works. That's just the way it is. Awesome. Well, thanks for all the information. I appreciate what you guys do every day to try to add value uh, for our industry, for our cattlemen out there, and uh, and help the whole system be uh, pay, pay for good cattle, I guess. And so thanks for what you do, and thanks for the great uh, mm -hmm. webinar, great information. Look forward to seeing you all down the road soon, and thank you to our audience. Uh, we're going to wrap things up tonight. Hope to see you at our summer business meeting or somewhere else uh, down the line. Have a great night.